So, in honor of Avengers Endgame's release this Friday, a group of YouTubers worked together to make a series of videos branded as One Marvelous Scene, where they all went through what they felt was the ultimate scene of any MCU movie. The person who organized the series, Nando V Movies, a channel that I am a huge fan of, opened the floor for others to make their own videos on this topic. So I decided to do my own video with my one marvelous scene. Which was fun because I've never actually sat down to decide what my favorite scene in the MCU is. And so I took the time really thinking over every single one of the 21 movies released thus far. Which was really hard since there are so many great scenes in all of the movies. So picking one scene that stands above all for each movie, let alone all 21, was really, really challenging. And in the end, I had about three to five that I thought all kind of stood together as the best scenes of the MCU. And as much as I would love to talk about all of them, one of them for sure to me, kind of stood above the rest. And so I came to the conclusion that my one marvelous scene is the chain from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, which is actually my favorite Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, which I might do a full video explaining that one uh, later. But for now, let's stick with the scene. Now, in actuality, my favorite scene in the film is Yondu's funeral up until the end of the film. Uh, I ball my eyes out every time I watch it. It's so well written, directed, and acted. It's just fantastic. But another channel who was part of the original lineup actually uh, covered that scene. And also, in terms of scenes that perfectly capture the themes of um, the film itself in a moment that can make you laugh, cry, and cheer... I don't think any scene in the movie does this better than the chain. So to start, here is the scene. Greater meaning can life possibly have to offer? I don't use my head to fly the arrow, boy. I use my heart. Killed my mom and squished my Walkman. Wow, that is fantastic. And here's why. So, we can't talk about Guardians Volume 2 without mentioning the music, and the choice here is The Chain by Fleetwood Mac. Now, the song is already fantastic on its own, but this scene adds so much. The song not only fits really well for the slow parts, but when it picks up and the action starts, the music follows, and it's awesome. I really like how the scene starts out without any music and then the music slowly starts to kick in showing Peter's growing control over the situation. I think it's the perfect song for the scene and the movie overall. I'm 100% convinced that without this song, the scene and the movie overall would be nowhere near as effective. The only song, the only other song that I feel this way towards in the film is Cat Stevens' Father and Son which now makes me cry every time I hear it. 
The music here is perfect, and it plays a huge part in making this scene and this film really work. Chris Pratt does a lot of great acting in this film. I think this is the one where he truly shines as Peter Quill, uh, above even Guardians 1 or Infinity War. And um, this is easily one of his standout moments of acting, not only in the film, but in the MCU overall. Having to say so much without speaking a word and only being able to convey his emotions through facial expressions, he does a fantastic job. You can see the shift when he gains control of the power from Ego's planet and Ego showing fear, even turning kind of gray. It's wonderful and subtly hints at Ego losing his power and control. Kurt Russell is also fantastic as Ego in the movie overall. He's suave, funny, but also so cut off from emotion and viewing himself as being beyond mortals and godlike, even before we find out he's a villain. He's so convinced that he has that his purpose is to destroy all other life until everything is just him. And it's that conviction and lack of empathy that make him do some really bad things, but always feel like his actions are in character. And that's why he is one of my favorite MCU villains. This scene, especially this montage here, really hammers home the theme of the movie. Family. In this scene, Peter Quill gives up the one thing he always wanted. A connection with his biological father and finding out his heritage. But in place of accepting his chosen family, who are the only people who really care about him and ever had his back, including Yondu, even if he... Even though they all fight, the Guardians really care about each other. And by accepting his true family and the love that he has for them and the love that they have for him, Peter gains the confidence, the power to remove his evil, abusive biological father from his life, playing into the larger themes in the film of abuse. But that's for another video another time. Though, if you want a look into the deeper themes of abuse in the Guardians films, I highly recommend Lindsay Ellis' video on the films. I'll link it in the description. Check it out. It's really good. James Gunn's direction of this scene is great. You can tell he knows what he's doing behind the camera and how to work with his actors, and it shows because he manages to get great performances from Chris Pratt and Kurt Russell, who really carry a large portion of this movie by themselves while also conveying so much of the story not through the characters and their actions and interactions though those are both very important to the scene but just the way that the camera work is used the way the scene is edited and just all the subtle things that go into this scene make for a really well paced well put together scene on top of the acting and writing subtleties that are just throughout the movie, really. And speaking of Gunn and the writing, this scene is very well written. Ego's lines, though they are kind of one-dimensional villain dialogue. I told you, I don't want to do this alone. You cannot deny the purpose the universe has bestowed upon you. It doesn't need to be like this, Peter. Why are you destroying our chance? I really like the way Kurt Russell delivers them, and I really do like the consistency of Ego's character, because even though the audience's perspective on him changes, we discover that he's the villain, not a good guy he's still the same character from before. His actions and motivations are all the same. We just have them framed differently now in our minds, which I think is really awesome. I also really like how this scene solidifies Peter's arc through the film, learning to accept the family he has rather than the one he thought he always wanted. And in a scene... And all in a scene that uses the screenwriting tip of showing rather than telling. Also, there is no line that gets me more pumped than... You shouldn't have killed my mom and squished my Walkman. 
The writing of the overall movie is great, but this scene is where it feels like everything set up in volume one, everything thus far in volume two has been building to, and here's hoping that volume three can take everything set up in volume one, two, and uh, Infinity War, and probably Endgame, to recontextualize all of that and deliver closure to the complicated arcs of these characters. So the MCU overall is about broken, damaged characters trying to find their place, trying to find their family. Captain America learns to adapt his 1940s sensibilities for modern times and finds his family in the Avengers. Tony Stark goes from the man who... to now being engaged, talking about children, even having a surrogate son in the form of Peter Parker. The Guardians films show the same thing, but rather than spread across multiple films, focusing on multiple characters at a time, it's contained to two and one tight-knit group. Peter Quill learns that even though he never knew his biological father, his adoptive father was y his adoptive father of Yandu was the father he always wanted. Gamora makes a step to towards moving on from the abuse suffered at the hands of Thanos and starting to learn to open up to others. Drax is able to move past the revenge-driven life he chose after the deaths of his wife and daughter, and learns that he can still have a place in the galaxy and do something good. Parenthood is a theme in this movie that is solidified through the team's treatment of Groot. And then there's Rocket, who pushed everyone away, and for all intents and purposes, is kind of a dick. But no matter how hard he tries to push them away... Even when he, uh... I was always me. And he stole batteries he didn't need. Well, of course not. Yeah, that really says it all. They still keep him around because as much as he might frustrate them, they love him. They all love each other despite their flaws. Despite how much they still need to grow, James Gunn knows that Marvel's characters are all flawed, broken people and plays that up to make the characters flaws and brokenness the heart and soul of the Guardians films. Whether it's the story of unlikely allies coming together to form an unconventional family or the struggle of the family to stay together to not break the chain, these movies are the heart and soul of the MCU and really show what the MCU is and should be all about. It also doesn't hurt that Gunn puts pieces of himself into the characters, his flaws, his insecurities, making the films feel more personal and like more care was put into them on a deeper level with the writing and subtext. Um, I see a lot of myself in the Guardians of the Galaxy, my strengths, and my flaws. And seeing that they can move past each other's flaws, come to accept each other, and to find family is really heartwarming. This one fun, emotional, and triumphant moment, and this one big, fun, emotional, and triumphant film, to me, represents the MCU at its best, and that's why this is my one marvelous scene. Thanks so much for watching this video. Leave a like if you did, and uh, check out the playlist for the other videos in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.